Hey guys, <clears throat> how is everybody doing? <clears throat> Bear with me a second. My last job this week is this webinar. I don't trade Friday, so I have a three day weekend. So this is my last bit of stuff. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just catch up all with all the admin crap <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> hey, Greg, how you doing? Miss you today in the inner circle. Was you uh, busy? I didn't see you. Okay. Righty ho. Let's give it a couple more minutes, then we'll get going. Thursday is my Friday. Oh, topsy turvy week with futures this this week, but uh, stocks doing okay. Okay, I think most people will be here that's going to turn up now. It is uh, exactly half past, so let's get going. Today's theme is the roller coaster, guys. Okay, you will see parts of other indicators on my chart and trial indicators, but the main thing is we are talking about the roller coaster, uh, not you know, the the um, the smart list and also then what it looks like on the chart and how to trade it and all that sort of thing. So I'm taking copper on the three minute today. I trade copper a lot just recently. Um, works very well on the uh, roller coaster. So again, if you are a member of the 5k club, you will get, uh, well, you won't get copper, but what one of the things that you need to do when you are working on futures, is you need to go to the six minute time frame. And I say this every freaking week. But you need to do it. You need to go out and you need to look at really strong support and resistance zones. This is one right now that it's tested again today. Just going to extend that one a little bit. Um, and then what I'm going to do as well is I've had some lows this week and I've tested this previous pivot point here. So when I'm framing my chart as it were on the 60 minute for futures i'm going to put this one in as well because this is really strong i take the bottom of this pivot as well and that's going to be in the future for me another zone so i could change that to yellow because it's only temporary for now so one of the main things i wanted to just really stress here is you can see hg on the 60 minutes been in quite a, a range now we can define the bottom of that range the top of the range is already defined by a, a, a previous support resistance zone that I put on. So and then that ties into then why I thought this HG trade was good on roller coaster. So we came up during the European morning, we tested the resistance level, then we came down. Then we came back up to test it again, lower resistance level. They are the you know the bias is bearish to me now. Then you get a roller coaster entry here. This is thirteen fifteen, so that's about seven fifteen a.m. EST. Um, you know that's the trigger. There, I've got a lot of fresh air below. If I wanted to go below this pivot, I could have done. But to be honest, when I'm going to annotate this, this is really important understanding behaviour. Uh, really, really important here. When we test 
on these overnight highs into this resistance zone. Then we get another test that fails. Then we get another test all the time getting these lower resistance levels. It's not got enough juice to push up. When I get a short roller coaster, I'm going short. I've got a great stop up here, great risk reward because I've got all the way down to this sort of area as a potential trade. It's a really good looking trade there. Clear all of that. Then you simply just, you know, when you've done your work and you understand that we've hit resistance, again, the lower re resistance um, turnaways, uh, if you like, we've got a good risk reward there. You're going to go for it because HG on the three minutes has an 87% win rate. Okay. Hola, Federico. ¿Qué tal? So HG gives me a short, it's got an 87% win rate, okay, there is a 13% loss rate, but everything ties up for me, got a great risk reward, it's been testing, it's been failing, I'm going short. Comes down short, trailing stop positions are printed, and that is a massive move. Okay, so next, we then pull back up, the US session opened here. So just after the open, took out the trailing stop. We pulled back up. Then we got another short signal. Now, this is not a monster move right now. But again, when we pulled back up, we got the short. We had enough room from this entry to these lows, a one-to-one -one risk reward. So we go again. Now it's printing the trailing stops. It's risk-free. It's a really, really simple looking trade. The main thing when you're using the roller coasters and make sure you've got enough fresh air, you framed your chart with those linear support and resistance zones. Are we in a channel? Are we testing the upper bound or the lower bound of a channel right now? That sort of thing you should be looking at. Um, and also looking for the groove as well. You know, right now, if there's a three, I don't trade on a Fridays, but if there's a three minute signal tomorrow, and I'm in the groove on the three minute with HG, uh, I'm looking good. So when I, when I mean by in the groove, I mean by winners, okay? Uh, we've got a winner here, loser, loser, winner, big winner there, and another winner. So we've got five trades in the last 24 hours, to make sure there's no more, uh, and two were losers. So reasonably sticking to that win rate. When the, win, when the winners come though, they do move pretty well. And, and copper is indicative of that. We do get some really great moves. Platinum's the same, uh, bit gappy. We've just added platinum, guys, to the smallest. You'll see PL and zero there. Okay, it's, it says 100% win rate now because it's had one trade and it's a winner, okay? It needs time to start to build a history with that. So platinum's new. Uh, so, you know, we do some work we innovate and we add ones that respond well to our indicators. In this case, it's a roller coaster. Okay. We just had another signal there. Was that a roller coaster or a bits? I think it was a roller uh, of bits, the way it looks of it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Let's just go to platinum. A second. So it's had one winner. It's had one trade when it was a winner. I'm going to win a chicken dinner. Okay. There we go. So, since we launched it and it went live today, we've had the one trade, which is still in at uh, 8.11.90 on the roller coaster. Again, is there a decent risk reward between stop and entry and the recent low? One to, well, let's measure it. Use your Fib extension. There's the stop. There's the entry. That's a one to 1.4. To the low of today that's a decent enough uh, risk to reward for me because usually when you go past that one to 0 0.5 you start to print the trailing stop positions usually okay that's not that's not the algorithm that's just an observation that i've made okay the algorithm works out uh, lagging points and control and all all this weird and wonderful stuff. But in essence, once it gets through that 50%, we it, near enough, we start to print those trading stop positions there. 6A 
has just printed a one minute short with an 86% win rate so far on 6A. So if we just change to 6A, we bring the one minute chart over. So now we're going to 6A because I've got a signal on 6A on the one minute on the roller coaster. Okay, so again, while that's my think or swim catches up, uh, we've got a one minute short uh, on 6A. And we're going to have a look on the chart now. Okay. Ooh. Sorry for the yellow, it's in one of my support zones. And it's a one minute chart, so the support zones are quite large. Let's just um, remove that drawing a second. I can do that again. So we know we've got an 87% eight, win rate on the one minute with 6A, okay? So today we've had a long winner. How do I know it's a winner? It's printed a trading stops, it's taking it out. Now we've had another short signal that came up on with the ding-dings, if you like, with those ding-dings uh, on 6A, and that was a short entry there. Okay, it's going. Was that another, where was that uh, signal? Bear with me a second. I'm just seeing it. Oh no, it was um, bits signal. Okay, so again, uh, very simple. If you use the smartest membership in conjunction with your uh, charts and your roller coaster, it, what it does is allows you trading opportunities on multiple time frames on multiple instruments. Okay, so it goes ding ding. You see that there was a there was a lightning strike next to it. Okay, it's going short on the one minute. It's got an eighty six percent win rate. Good enough for me. Going short. There's the entry. I've got lots of risk reward below. Uh, and you know, here we go. So that's the one minute there. So it works. We have so we have one, two, three, five, fifteen, thirty, six minute time frames. Okay, works very, very well there. So let's just pull that back up. Uh, let's reduce that again. Let's move that out of the way. Oh, we've got a lot in today. Wow. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Well, 6A on the two minute now has got an entry. Okay. I wouldn't trade uh, currencies right now because we are, Europe's closed for a start and most of the currency traders live in Europe and Asia. So there is the entry short. Quite like that one, actually. It's just through this pivot here. Risk, risk reward isn't fantastic. Wrong time of the day to trade this. That low on that pivot point there is 6844. And we've got a 6844 entry. So it'd be a, you know, a 6843 type of entry for me. But then you've got to look at what your risk reward is. Where's the lows? Where's the uh, support and resistance zones? All that sort of thing. But there you go. There's another, and, and you, as you notice here, when you get the ding dings, and when you see on the chart, the stop goes ab above the recent pivot, okay? Uh, we do get the entry here. I would have gone at, six, uh, at 43 to go short, but again, we've got these lows here at 38, so it's only a five tick stout scalp of anything. It's not a fantastic looking trade. Got another ding dings coming up now. Where are they? Uh, I think they are bits right now. A bit okay, and some more coming in. It's constant, guys, because I have I have one, two, three, and five minutes on the roller coaster, and I have three and five minutes on the bits there. Okay, so MNQ now we've got a signal on the one minute short. Okay, it's coming up on the watch list. Let me just change over ticker. So there you go. You heard the ding dings. It's got a little lightning strike that means new signal, gives you the entry, gives you the, uh, the stop. So you bring your one minute chart over on gold and you do just a tiny bit of little work here. Okay, oh, I think I'll swim really is annoying me just recently. Um, so we've just had 
one, two, three, four trades, all winners on the one minute on MNQ. This is in the groove, okay? This is in the groove for a short. Sod's law is we pick the only loser. Uh, but again, on the one minute, I can't see a loser today on MNQ. Since the training stops are printed, we class that as a winner, you see. So one minute, this, this one training stops here, look, okay. So one minute is in the group, there it goes. There it goes, MNQ, okay. And then basically what we're looking for is one, the one minute, we need to look at this major support down here. The risk reward is massive. If we just use a Fib retracement uh, extension again, stop, entry, you know, we're one to two down here, okay? We're one to one to this support zone here. So really good. And this, this support zone is pretty damn good. Why is the, oh, is it MNQ? Are we on the right one? Yeah, MNQ, yeah. So there you go. On the one minute MNQ today is in the groove. By in the groove, I mean there's no losers. When we're getting the signals, we're going long, we're going short, and we're riding the roller coaster. And this is why it's called the roller coaster, guys, okay? We're going from oversold to overbought to oversold to overbought. So when we get this, I've never used this drawing tool before, so there we go. We're going up with literally, this is the move we're making, and we're going short. We're riding the roller coaster. There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes with this, with stochastic MACD crosses, three points of control with EMAs, but it does it all for you. But when you get, when you see an instrument in a groove like this, you've just got to keep going, okay? MNQ now on the two minute, keeps trying to print uh, a tr uh, an entry for a short. So let's just clear all those drawings, okay? Let me pin that. Okay, two minutes. Now, at the moment, it's not gone ding ding because it just keeps disappearing. So, we're just going to keep an eye on this. Bear with me. Okay, so that was our entry, if you like, for the one minute. If you think the one minute is a little bit too aggressive for you later on in the session, just see if we get a two minute signal now. I did see it appear and go away again very quickly. So, if this starts to move down again, we'll get that appearing. So again, multiple time frames really, really important here to understand where things are going on what time frames and finding out what's working, what's in the groove for a particular instrument. And that can change daily as well. So my setup for futures is pretty extensive uh, in that I use my top screen here. I think I shared it the other week as well. So let's just do... Let's go round the houses of my screens, okay? So this is my main screen that I'm sharing now. Uh, it has um, my bits on the top, okay? On the five minute on the left, and on the bottom left is the Elliott Wave and the roller coaster. And then top right is three minute, bottom right is three minute as well. And again, I always have these roller coasters and Elliott Wave on the bottom, the bits on the top. Then to the left of that on the other screen, I've got my one minute chart, but then also I have my uh, 6B and 6E 10 minute charts that I like to trade off. To the left, to the left, I have, why can't I restore that? Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh what's going off? Bear with me a second, I think I pressed the wrong button. Okay. To the left, I have 60, 15, and two minutes, okay? So when you're day trading and day trade off the one, the two, the three, or the five, you also need to understand what's going off in the 15. And sometimes if it's a micro, you can trade the 15 as well if you've got enough time left in the day, if you like. Um, so. And then above, I have my smart lists. Uh, I'll share that screen because that's uh, there's a lot on there. 
Let me just move that out of the way because that's my broker. Okay, so there's my smart lists. Trevor, it's not just when the MACD and the stochastic cross. There's certain parameters within there that the algorithm works out that it's a good, it's a good cross, if you like. Okay, uh, and then there's three points of control which are really amazing. They all have to be in alignment, a little bit like stars as well, to give you those. And they all have to be in the right instance for the signal to appear. Okay, uh, so uh, that's the uh, that's the the smart list screen that I've got. And then we have uh, da, 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 which one is it now? That's not screen one twenty two. There's another screen somewhere. I think it's that one. That's top right. That is, uh, I've got your, your guys chatting there, but also that has my indexes on the five minute there, ES, NQ, RTY, because they, they, they can sometimes dictate what things will happen. They've been pretty rangy last couple of days, very boring, um, but they're, you know, they're there to help me as well. And then obviously to the top left is my inner circle page, where I won't show you that. Um, but that is to do with uh, the stocks that we're in on the investment portfolio and swing trading and all that sort of stuff. So let's go back to screen one. Okay. Just moving the chart. Okay. So again, we get the, the ding-dings, if you like, uh, on your smart list. If you're not, if you're just following one particular instrument, you get uh, the, you just get the signals appear on your chart anyway. Yes, under one minute. Oh, yesterday around 10 a.m. Oh, I don't think I'll have that. It's, it's a long way back. <laughs> That's a long way back. I don't. I don't even think I go back more than a day on here. No, I don't. I have to go back two days. It's going to take a bit of time. It's a lot of data to crunch through. So that's 10 a.m. what time? Sorry, I've got to figure out where I am. Uh, so it's about 4 p.m. in my time. Okay. This signal here. Oof. Massive stop at entry there. That's one thing that puts me off straight away. Okay, so your entry is here at 301, 3101.67. Your stop is 321, 20 points on ES. On a, so you just wouldn't take it, okay? Because you've got this massive red candle that moves down, this one-minute candle. That's your pivot. The, the program has no choice, but that's where your stop's going to be. So in this case, you don't take it because you're, there's a 20-point stop, and then there's another less than 20 points to the main support zone there. So no, you wouldn't take it. You have to be sensible with those trades. And again, it has to be in the group, okay? Uh, one minute on it. I mean, ES at the moment, I'm, I'm not trading indexes right now. I'm just trading um, just trading metals at the moment. Okay. On ES, uh, I mean, it looks like there's been a couple of winners. The nice move this morning. I mean, this is perfect, guys. This is the open here. Um, you've got before the open, uh, 15 minutes before the open, you get a signal to go long. 
uh, it's above this support and resistance zone. You've got the stop below here. It comes back to test, boom, 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 and then goes brilliant, okay? Really, really cool looking trade there. At the highs, 3,187. That's a 23 point move. That was a great, almost 100 ticks that move there to those highs. Very, very good. Did you take that? Um, Frederico, did you take that one? That was a good trade. I had a finish for the day then. Hundred ticks on the S. Don't need any more. Ja, ja, ja. <laughs> so we have been quite rangy with the S today. That's um, I always don't like. Uh, I don't like rangy days with indexes, and they've been like that just recently. Uh, so also stocks, guys. Stocks can work very well on this. Um, so what we'll do is I'll pull up a stocks chart on the daily. I'll bring the um, on the website. We have the. Okay, so the roller coaster we have stock smart scanner. So what this does is scans uh, all stocks that trade over ten dollars in price, have an average of over five hundred thousand shares traded a day, and if it meets the criteria for a roller coaster, we go. Okay, so BP was a new one this morning, short. Okay, so let's see what happened on BP. Okay, yeah, it's triggered. It's quite gappy, this stock. I don't think I'd have taken this one. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's almost like it's a potential fifth wave move as well. So, you know, it's pretty good there. But this is gappy and in a range. And the entry for the roller coaster is not below these pivots. So I wouldn't have gone in that one. Um, ET was another one that came out uh, on the roller coaster today at 7 p.m. That's not bad. Again, another potential fifth wave move. Go to the weekly. What does that look like? A second. Oh, Lord. The, even the roller coaster works on the weekly look on stocks. Um, I'll go back to the daily a second. Was that a trade? Again, we've got some pivot points below here, so probably not. Uh, KMI was another one. Uh, you've got to look on the main, main overall trend, uh, Trevor, okay? Um, right now, we've had pandemic dump. Now we're grinding back up. This short here gave us a short signal. However, we've got so much support under here. It's not, we're not going to go. You know, we've got big support resistance zone there. We've got a pivot here as well, okay? So when it gives us a signal there, we've got to get through some bloody rubbish first before we can get going. So you just don't take it. Yeah, that's right. You need fresh air. Big poster on your wall. Fresh air. Yeah. Good risk to reward. LVS, another one. And it's about being patient. Okay. Okay, let's remove that a second on that. See, this doesn't look too bad right now. We could be breaking out of this channel. I've done a bit of work on this in the past. It's really kept to this channel, but now we've got a roller coaster short coming in. So I need to look at this a little further. Uh, one thing I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to put the support and resistance zones in here. Okay, and there. Where it meets the channel here is massive and getting some ding dings and some movement in the markets right now. Okay, and we've got a big rejection here as well. Okay, so I'm just seeing what trouble is ahead for this potential trade. Okay, and recently we've got these here as well. So we need to really consider uh, this as a rejection, a recent support level. So, so far that signal price gives us. Uh, an entry just above this resistance. So 
I'm going to look at a, a slightly lower entry, see what the risk reward is. So I'm going to put click first there. I want to go low. I want to make sure I break out of this channel, if you like. So a 47.36. Right. Okay. So this is my logical thinking right now. I got a, you know, my stop up here, my entry wouldn't be yet. I've got to break out of this channel, I've got to break out of this linear support. Then I'm looking for short at 47.36. Okay. My my 50% uh, reward is at the next support level. Again, usually before you get to that, you, when you get to that 50%, you start to print those at risk free. So that's always an option. You know, to this ultimate low, I'm one to 1 1.6. I've got some small ones in there as well. But once my trading stop starts getting printed, because, hey, guys, it can go like this, okay? And you've got to be in it to win it, okay? You don't know at this point if this is going to be a good trade. You've got a reasonably good risk reward. You go, yeah? Starts to print the trailing stop. You're safe. Just follow the trailing stop. So again, worked on stocks as well as futures. Really, really, really simple to use. And we do have the smart list for stocks. It's, a, it's more like a scanner, if you like, uh, that works pretty well there. Some more ding-dings. We've got a 6S coming in on the one minute. We've got nothing on any larger time frames right now. Uh, is the, oh, we've got an RTY long on the five minutes. There you go. What RTY? What does that look like? I'll go five minute. I know it's this chart, so I'm going to make it big. Okay, is this in the groove today? Ooh, it was yesterday. Winner, winner, little winner, loser, loser, huge winner. Winner, this is today, winner, two winners today, both longs. Ooh, I'm getting a long signal now to go on RTY. Okay, got a great risk reward here. We've got a long way to go to these highs of the day. You know, this one, really, in reality, we've got to go long above the wave four pivot here. So we're going to have to be a little later into this one, but it's still got a decent risk reward. Okay, so that wave four pivot here high is 1425.30. Okay, 1425.30. So 1425.60, decent entry there. Stop's going to be at 1416.9. So you've got, a, you've got a big gap there. But you know what? The beauty of micros. Go micro, go micro. Two contracts, really small risk, 1425.60, put the long on, job's done, okay? You know you've got a reasonably reasonably good, you know, got a good win rate today, two out of two for the longs. Um, so, we, you know, we're good to go. For me, though, I know it's printed the entry here, but I would I need to break this recent pivot. Have I got a decent risk reward from that conservative entry? Yes, I have all the way up to these highs of the day, one to one point six. So if I risk a hundred dollars here, I could probably win one hundred and sixty dollars. You know, that's the sort of thing you should be thinking about there. Uh, so again, the beauty of micros when you're trading these indexes is that you can have a small risk for such a large stop and entry. So when you're using the roller coaster on futures, just go micros. You just keep banging them in. You know. You know, on the five minute RTY, M2K, they both came up with signals, 88% win rate, okay? 88. It's got a 90% on RTY, okay? So this has got a great win rate. You know today, you're two for two. You just gotta put it on. Do the small risk. If you get two or three trades a day, just keep following them. You get winner, winner, loser, winner, winner, loser, winner, winner, loser. Just keep going. I mean. You know, once something's in the groove, you can just keep trading it in the day uh, and forget about everything else. Okay, this is coming up pretty fast right now. We're on 1425.60 is my entry. Remember, that wave four pivot really stopped me going earlier because it's a little bit more risky because it could reject at that pivot. What I'm looking for is I'm looking at the other indexes right now. 
Uh, we've got good support at uh, YM, but it's not really pushing much. But ES and NQ is pushing pretty strong. This could be a nice run into the end of the day and come all the way up to 1440 again. Okay, 1440 from 1425.60, that's a crap ton of ticks. Okay, does that make sense the way I've worked that out? I've got the signal on the five minute, it goes ding, ding, ding. Okay, on my smart list. Again, the smart list is 199 bucks a month. You can get that back in one trade. It's all about having your uh, trading as a business. You've got business costs. Any business has costs. If you get a return on investment for that cost, so you lease the roller coaster indicator suite each year for 500 bucks. Yeah, one trade paid for. 199 bucks for the smartest because we pay a load of money for data to give you these live signals. Okay, we even give you the win rates. 199 bucks, one trade a month, done, finished. Return on investment. It's a good part of your trading business. I'm looking for a way for failure here, Trevor, okay? I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, we've had a, a rangy day, yeah? This was the open here. We moved up, we pulled back down. We could be going back up here now, okay? So if I was to, I mean, this is all ABC corrections, yeah? If I was to take that Elliott wave away and just do a fib retracement of the move today, okay? So I'm gonna go from the lows of the day to the highs of the day. I'm gonna put in 236382-5618, okay? Perfect, yeah, that pullback has, for the day has found support in the 618 to 50 zone. So you, you know the zones that you see on the way four? These are the three zones here. This is good. Again, I'm not gonna go long until I've beaten that pivot, which came back down, but I'm, I'm betting for the day it went long. It pulled back, it found a good fib zone here. 50 to 618 is fantastic, okay? 382 to 50 is even better. Uh, but my entry is above the 382 fib. It's above this uh, high here on this wave four. It's a sensible play. We were long, we pulled back. We're going, you know, potentially we could be going long again. And remember, this isn't a great fifth wave move. We had one, two, three, four, five candles to the wave four, okay? Five candles to the wave four, yeah? This, remember the 535 didn't even hardly move. This wasn't a proper wave four. Statistically, because of the measurements, it was, but the 535 may, showed you it was not a pullback, okay? And the stochastic would be the same. If I just re restore that right now, you look at the stochastic here for this, this pullback, okay? Here and here and here. Uh, no, we're on the five minute, apologies. Stochastic didn't cross, okay? It didn't cross on that wave four pivot. It could still cross right now and come back down. But right now, that's not a proper fifth wave um, trade setup because the 535 on this wave four pullback here did not even come back to zero. Which chart? I tried to explain, again, if you follow your rules, this is not a wave four pullback. The stock, the 535 from this wave three did not even pull back to zero. Okay. So that wave four has not behaved normally. The stochastics not behave normally. All it's done is printed the wave four. But then this is why you've got those other tools to actually decide whether that's a proper wave four or not. And it's not, so don't trade it, okay? Okay. Any more questions on the roller coaster? It's one of the simplest strategies, but one of the things you really have to remember is risk to reward. 
and understand the behavior of the day. A little trick that I gave you there is, if you've gone from the lows of the day, this is the pre-market session here, this is the market open, and you've gone long, and you've pulled back, you've gone from oversold on your stochastic to overbought, put a, re, put a fib retracement in. You'll usually find 382 to 50, or the 50 to 618, if it finds support there and starts to move way back up again, it's going to actually rejoin that main bullish trend. Okay? Little trick there when you're day trading. Okay. So, again, I try and keep things simple. In, if you were trying to do this manually, it would be a really complicated strategy because there's a lot to think about. But what I did this manually for quite a few years. But what I did was get those rules and everything that I did, gave them to a geek, and he put it into an algorithm. Okay? That makes sense? Okay, I'm just going to cancel my order now because I'm not trading. And I just wanted to show you that. So let's just finish off on some charts on some stocks. Uh, square. Oh, look at this move. Right, okay, so since the beginning of this year, Square has had three roller coaster trades. It's had three winners. Do you think Square is in the groove with a roller coaster on the daily time frame? Everybody say yes or no. Absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. So, what happens when this finds resistance? And all of a sudden starts to come down, and you get a roller coaster short signal on square. You're going to trade it? Absolutely. For, for this year, three trades, three winners. It's in the groove. You've got to give it a go. And this bearish move down, potentially when it finds that high. Um, would be a wave four pullback. So you can trade the wave four pullback on the roller coaster if it finds support and starts to move back up and everything tees up for a fifth wave move, you're gonna trade the um, you're gonna trade the fifth wave long. Really, really simple. Great looking trade, it's in the groove. JPM. Oof. Sort of in the groove. Had some losers here at the beginning of the year. Oh, that was last year. Uh, this year so far, we've had one winner. And we're already, oh, we've taken our train stop for this one. Okay. Don't like this one as much. I think if I get another long on the roller coaster, I'd probably go along there, uh, Trevor. Uh, but right now, we've had the big move down. And this is basically how the market's reacting, get some free money. You know, 5 million uh, US citizens get some free money. What do they do? They don't buy diapers or food. They buy stocks. Uh, you know, all this unemployment, and they go and buy stocks and everything. And it, we've got some unrealistic moves in the, in the markets right now. Uh, and then some profit taken and then some more. It's just weird. Uh, but right now, too gappy JPM for me to trade. Okay. Anybody else got any questions? stocks or um or futures okay on the on the um on the roller coaster okay nothing else we are roller coaster today okay so this is coming back up look on this roller coaster 14.25.6 you heard it here if you haven't got the roller coaster please don't enter it otherwise you won't be able to manage to trade properly uh, come on, this is your time, guys. I give up my time on a Thursday, and we look at specific indicators. If you've got questions, it's your time. No, no free money in Spain. There is help for those that need it. Um, <laughs> some of it comes from us. My wife's been taking food parcels since the beginning of the pandemic to, to quite a few families locally. Uh, that were struggling, um, you know, everybody tried to do their bit, uh, but the Spanish government is giving some money, but it's not blanket across the board. Nah, Trevor, I don't want to move to the US, it's full of Americans and British. 
<laughs> Remember, you threw us out. <laughs> you rebelled. It's nice when I visit. Come over three, four, sometimes five times a year. Uh, it's nice when I visit. I enjoy it. I uh, have a great time and meet new people. We have 40, 50 people in a room. Uh, we have drinks at night as well, and I have a great time. Um, so, yeah, I, I really do like the States, but I love living in the south of Spain. You know, I've got a great uh, house. I, you know, I, I moved at the beginning of March uh, to, to, to the house that I want to spend the rest of my life in. So, um, really, really good. Yeah, amazing. Um, amazing. I love it. I love it. This is uh, this is my mountain views from my pool, you see. These are reclaimed pallets with uh, cushions on for sunbathing. <laughs> There's my uh, out. There's my dog as well. Look. Yeah, I've had a tough lockdown. A tough lockdown. Two, these trees in my garden, uh, they look like bonsai trees. Are actually olive trees. They're two hundred years old. Amazing. Yeah, I've got one Frenchie. And he sleeps 20 hours a day. I'm going to put this on, you know. I'm sorry, but I'm going to. I'm actually going to put this on for a couple of contracts, 14.25.6, and then I'll uh, just keep an eye on it later uh, during the night. He snores a lot as well. My French bulldog snores like you would not believe. And farts as well, snores and farts. He's like a typical man, really. <clears throat> so yeah, I love I love living in Spain. I love traveling, but I've only been to the US once this year to Houston. Uh, I, my New York trip got cancelled, um, but I did still conduct the training actually online. Um, so that was pretty cool, and we recorded it. The recording is not free, it's a course. If you attended, you've already got the recording. Oh, the recording for this webinar. Okay, uh, it'll be sometime tomorrow. Um, but when, when I have time, it'll be definitely before the weekend. What you meant the, uh, so I actually have my own website now. It's not just Trade the Fifth. Uh, there's a bit more about me in there. There's a gallery of me and my life. Even I think some of them. There's me, young soldier on the left there in the basketball. There's Damien, if you've never spoken to Damien, that's Damien there as well. He's, uh, you know, this is um, so yeah, all about me on paulbradby.com and also training and behavior course is now available. So I recorded the whole weekend's training uh, in six sessions here and that is available to, to get as a course as well now. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, you can live like a, like a king in, in Spain. Absolutely. Okay, guys. Any more questions? Okay, it's roller coaster is the simplest strategy because it does it all for you. You just gotta just gotta make sure you got enough fresh air, good risk to reward. You understand what's going up in the markets that day or that year if you're on stocks, and you've got enough risk to reward. Work, you know, you've got to adjust your risk size, but then you just go for it. You've got a great win rate. You know, we, we're, 
for years, I just did this manually and I knew there was an 85% win rate because I just know these things, you know, because I, I keep uh, my P&L. And then when you, when, you, when you see these on the five minute look um, here, 90% win rates on bonds, YM 90. I think the lowest win rate here is 82% on the micro gold uh, and the gold is 82% on the roller coaster. 92, 93 on natural gas is the highest or 6J. 100% uh, on platinum, we only added it today, you only had one trade, so you need that time to, uh, to promulgate there. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Any more questions, guys? Come on. Last chance, and then I'm gonna get a grab a beer. Okay, thank you, Greg. I'll see you on Monday, hopefully. Okay, Jamie. Yeah, I did add the I did add you to the lists. I noticed you'd paid, so yeah. Uh, have fun. Make sure you watch the um, the boot camps and all that sort of thing, and take your time. Rome wasn't built in a day. Thank you, Kathy. Cheers, everybody. Have a great weekend. Yeah, I, I don't blame you, Jamie. My weekend starts today. Don't trade Fridays, so. Uh, have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you, you're out. Okay, Federico. Thank you, thank you, guys.